the place where nothing is safe this is episode 31 of the jig is up podcast and i'm your host yours marco it means he just woke up a little late so he'll be in the studio but in his place right now that might be him coming in is uh my boy dan aka jamal what up what up what up and then uh we have like a couple this is the first time in Jigs Up Podcast history, we have a couple. We have no. Miss Meanie from last time from the episode uh, No More List in SD. Go back and listen to that one. But she brought her man fresh in the house. What up, my dude? How man, you doing? I'm chilling, brother. You chilling? I just had a bomb-ass beer, bro. It's an <laughs> amber from uh, Monkey Paw. I- uh-huh. I'm feeling quite delighted right now. You this is it? this is an experience, brother. Let's do it. All right. We'll go ahead and do it, man. So... You know, we pride ourselves, man. Our MO is nothing is safe. If you see me on my Twitter, I always put a hashtag on some shit that I think is funny and I just say nothing is safe. That's what I do. <laughs> but man, um, however y'all motherfuckers listen to this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, or even on YouTube, go ahead and like, subscribe, share, all that good shit because we appreciate that. I do like the fact that some people ask me. Hey, what y'all talk about next week? I, I I appreciate that. So it's catching on. So thank y'all. Shout outs to all y'all. And but now, man, let's get into this nothing is safe segment. Now, this is a story. This shit is crazy. Did you hear about the 17 year old boy that died after a hickey? No. Nah. Man, I saw the uh the joint on, on World Star. I didn't click on it, but I saw it. Like just the picture and it looked Yo, so like, was it like super herpes or something? Like <laughs> <laughs> wow. she uh, said super she herpes. She got straight to the point. Yo, man, you're a man. Where's your head at? That's Damn, crazy. I'm glad I'm in a relationship. So, <laughs> nasty as fuck. Super herpes though. Super like, herpes. Meanie, what's up? How radical that is that? That sounds like some vampire shit. What I'm just saying, that did yeah. chew blood straight up. Yeah, like, okay, okay, so, super shit. so it happened in New Me- in Mexico City, and the hickey caused a blood clot. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> it tra- biting hard. <laughs> she was biting hard in the motherfucking Yo, dog, which crazy. traveled to his brain, oh my God. and it resulted into a stroke. Oh, Fuck he man. had the stroke when he was eating with his family. And cra- get this, his girlfriend was 24 years old. She has seven years experience on this nigga, man. Yeah, oh, and she, so. been- she had big lips. Man, she had sharp teeth. <laughs> she had something. That nigga about had like weak what arteries. I don't yeah, know no, what the fuck I it mean, is, but that sucks. That hella sucks. I mean, that's a blood clot. I mean, that's Dude, crazy. did he even get Babe, to bust a don't ever neck? bring them big ass teeth near my neck. It's <laughs> never going to happen. I cannot have this happen. What the fuck you talking about? Yeah, big ass life. teeth. Fuck out of here. Nigga, what? Nothing to do. That had everything to do with that dude's blood. Like, that's... No, I'm yeah, trying to figure out how condition. that could happen. Like, I'm I'm thinking back to the time because where I it's did. It's just like getting a bruise. Like, it's just yeah. like getting a bruise. Yeah. Where blood, the blood all pulls to that one spot. spot and if your blood clots. clots, and then it, you know, it's not going where it needs to go. And that makes, it makes sense. It's, it's crazy. You know, it that makes sense. Sense. But, like, but at the same time, it's, it's just crazy. How extreme would that have to no, be for you to, like, for somebody to give you a hickey and then you get a stroke? It's got to be, he's got to have a rare blood condition. That's the only way you could explain some shit like that. A blood clot. Because that's crazy. From a hickey. Do, yeah. have to be do a blood clots blood. You know fade? Yeah. Like, do you ever, like, they like can. say, you, like, if it, it has a long depends. way to travel, then it wouldn't. It now, just depends upon how there's much a, there's it's a report. built up and how bad it stops the blood from flowing. Damn. But um, now there's a report. This is this is the second incident. The first incident reported was back in 2010. A 44-year-old woman in New Zealand had this similar thing, but her stroke was non-fatal. So. But she old. <laughs> 40, she's 44 years old still getting hickey she getting so, some kind of action Fuck hey, it. Yeah. Yeah. Blood, so she had a blood clot too and so it she caused her to have a stroke but the stroke didn't kill her it was non-fatal it didn't kill her so Shit. Yeah. moral of the story is kids don't get no motherfucking hickeys <laughs> yeah man they're no, hater no, marks none of, yeah, none of that man <laughs> hater marks. stay away from all of that yeah like. as the as a, a once a great man uh said before uh no bite marks no scratches or hickey word to miguel miguel yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quickie. Quickie. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> man, so you any uh, last words on that? You know, that's a way. No, nothing to nah, say. That's that's crazy. Crazy. Nah, Dude, that's you know just, what else is nothing crazy. to say right now? The motherfucking gyms. The gyms. Oh, the gyms. What's wrong with the gyms? Like the what is happening? What about the it? LA Fitness? 
Cause Tiana Taylor got all these bitches oh, out shit. here in the gym working hard. <laughs> oh man, yeah. you seen that That's fucking right, video, bro? bro. <laughs> I watched it with my man. I'm not mm, sure. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, you sound kind of like a little hot and bothered when you said that. No, I watched it with like, my man. Man, no, she was just as intensive as I was, brother. She was looking at all of them, man. It was. Like oh. I'm not gonna it lie, was like beautiful real bonding shit. experience. Like man. I That's give saying, a girl props. <laughs> uh huh. I give a girl props when you gotta give her props. Like Tiana, she just had a child. Like and and she there's a lot of back. there's a lot of women out there. You know they figure once they have kids, they gotta let themselves know that's not true. Cause I had a baby too, and I fucking worked my ass off to fucking work that weight off. But Tiana, I give you props, cause that shit. And in fact, her man was in it with her, right? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. yeah he came in on the show. And like scene. that's world fucking champion. cool. And that's <laughs> world, like, champion. world champion. <laughs> Tiana knew she. You could tell in that video she knew she was. Bad as fuck. Like when she start fucking laying on her stomach, hitting that shit. Man, shit for you, Marco, like, I think that would be a good thing, thing though. Like video. this, this video seemed like it might have hooked brothers up. Like you, yeah. all the way, Look all the way you. up, uh, because uh, she was no, doing that because I know you be in the gym. Like when we go to the gym, like you said, we the fit couple. We got our team gym, maybe the same yeah. people. We like a family. But when you go into those thirst traps, like a twenty four hour fitness. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the LA fitness, whatever it is. is that like, you going? I'm pretty sure it's a lot. Man, I remember went, shit, just going up. in there and, just, just it, you know, it'd be chicks just doing extras. If yeah, they, they see in that video, that, they're, they're trying to step their game up. Well, like, see, bitches are about to get divorced right now because <laughs> it's, about, it's, about, it, it's about to be, look, it's about to be winter. I'm yeah. with you for the summer and you're gone. During when it's cold, so bitches is trying to get sexy again. And I'm pretty sure you're taking advantage of this. I hope you will. Uh, no, I, I, I hope so. We hey, live in know, San Diego. There's no winter here. There's no. It just yeah, gets a little really. bit. It, it just gets a little, little bit cold, cooler. But man, winter, fuck but that. you know, I was at I'm the, the other day. I was at 24 in Point Loma. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I ain't gonna lie, man. I saw this thick ass chick in the tread. Oh my god! Like, yeah, I should have seen her face. What is thick exactly? Like, bro, like she was thick. It wasn't like. Like she had a small waist and like she had thick. small waist, fat ass, big thighs. Was like she... she was thick in the right places. Huh. You know what I mean? And I was like, God damn! And it's funny because yeah, I hate it. Like when we lock eyes, <laughs> like I'm in, I'm about to do sit ups and shit, and she looked, glanced at me, and I glanced at her. I was like, damn, this is awkward. <laughs> Did she do hip thrusts? No, she didn't do any hip thrusts. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do what that other dude did where he was watching on the treadmill and then busted out like he was doing push-ups, right? No, no. Really I oh, I've that seen shit that was joint. The funniest shit I've ever seen. He looked, oh. he hella was staring and Mr. then did CPT some push-ups. Mr. CPT himself is here. All right, man. Well, hold on. Let's, let's, yeah, let's yeah. finish this segment with, with Jamal in here because he's warmed up. <laughs> charged up oh okay charged up man I, I gotta respect this dude for that like you are official brother I came in here throwing that you know that Raider Nation at him but, but dude it was crazy when I was at the gym I don't, I don't know if you saw on my snapchat there's just one dude fucking passed out in the gym cause he was going extra hard and the ambulance was there and shit I'm passed like, out at yeah, the gym yeah. well not, maybe not passed out but like the ambulance had to come by and like check on him and stuff was he not breathing during his sets or what uh, I don't, I don't know. You gotta breathe. Hey, Somebody, sometimes you, you take too much on every out. Like, what was happening? No, you probably oh, got too much out. That oh, should be having me like. Is. I don't, yeah, I don't understand that, that shit. You I don't do that. I don't do the pre workout. You don't do pre workout. No, I well, I get, I eat carbs. I eat carbs, but I don't do like a pre workout. Like I'll eat the complete carbs. No, hell no, I don't do that. Like I'll get. Like, like, like the, 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 yeah, like that, the bread. So you trying to bulk up, though? Here. Like, more so than, than, I mean, no. I'm trying to more lean no, out just, again. So I was like, well, it's yeah, different I mean, on your you're goals. Also, you're also a woman. A woman, you know, it's two different things. Me, yeah, I feel it. you know, I got a big beer gut, and uh, I don't drink beer. So I'm trying to lose that. So, uh, well, you know. Thing. Um, like just like or, I said, or what do they call it? They call it a dad gut now, right? That's dad what it is. Bod. It's cool to have that. You have a dad, dad bod. Now I'm trying to lose my shit. Is not cool. That's I'm trying to lose. Cool. Cool. I just want to let you guys know. Like I said, I've been slowly starting this little movement called hashtag Come Get This Work. Come now, get the, I haven't heard of this. You know, you know, that's what I've been doing on like Snapchat. I'm, you see, probably see me jogging. I'm like putting the camera to my face and I'm running. I'm sweating. I'm like, hey man, get your ass up. Come get this work. You know what I mean? So, I, I it sparked from you know I saw my little brother. You know I see him. He's in the bed he's playing video games. So I decided I'm like, man, man, let's go ahead and uh, let's fucking uh, go to uh, uh, not Seaport Village, but. Uh, up to uh, Tory Pines, go on a hike, you know what I mean? Come get this work, you know what I mean? I need my brother, you too young to 
to be just chilling and playing video games all day. You need to come get this work. That, I mean, that's all I can say, man. And yeah, now it was cool that some people hit me up. You know, one person. Hey, but it's a start. She was like, hey, when, when, you know, when do you usually come out? I want to join you. I'm like, cool. cool. So it's starting to build up a little bit more. I'm going to highlight my man, Billy Washington, who's a trainer out there in the IE. So we might try to get something together and just have awareness and fight obesity and fight all kinds of preventable diseases and we go out there and have fun. Nothing like too strenuous, maybe just on a walk, maybe just like a small hike or something, maybe a football, a little friendly game of football, something to yeah, get things the, going. You so, see, you see that's what happened Monday. today. Yeah. And Meezy came like, and got this work mm. and fell asleep. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, hey, Excuse me, not from you. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired. That's it, Meezy, y'all. Um, yeah. We need to do a beach workout. That's what I really want to do. Yeah, I man. Do a beach workout. Yeah, like, you know, like so drills, any of like, our you listeners, if you're in the San Diego area, time. man, like, we're not hard to find. If you want to get this work with us because. Hey, man, your health day isn't safe, so you better invest in it. Man, probably you just start a Get This Work Challenge. Ooh, that'll that'll be kind of, you know, some simple, like, yeah. hey, let's just spread it like wildfire. I'm going to do this. Let's see if you can do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Get more. You ain't got to be with us, but you can still get this work. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Wherever you are. In spirit. At. <laughs> Come get this work. In spirit. <laughs> but, man, let me tell you, though, man. Tell you, these women are working their asses off, and shout out to Tiana Taylor for inspiring these women. And I understand there are certain <laughs> levels of standards, you know, fitness standards that certain women can't achieve just because of your genetics, and that's fine. I know I'm probably not the type of dude who, who just gets super extra ripped. You know what I mean? I just accept that. I got small veins. I'm not gonna be extra veiny, but I'm just gonna be lean cut. And I like shopping at Urban Outfitters, so. I like <laughs> that nigga Marco got a six pack. He lying, <laughs> but he's saying he's not bulked up. Is what he's saying. Yeah. He's, oh, saying he's, cut, he's, he's cut. He's cut lean, but he's not. Like, bulk, yeah, he's yeah. not bulked up. Yeah, I'm not I bulked like up. So I, like Sorry, I said, I like shopping at uh, Urban Outfitters, maybe Forever Twenty One, all that shit. So hey, those clothes look better on me. You know what I'm saying? And knowing my ass being short, I don't look right being buff, bulky, and shit like that. It's just yeah, like, that yeah, would no, be right. Some yeah, of them dudes look weird as fuck. Right. And, and shout out to you niggas yeah. with the Oedipus complexes who likes to drive big trucks and the uh, <laughs> well, no no the Napoleon complex. There you go. But like, the Napoleon Oedipus, yeah. Oedipus, Oedipus like, like, with his mom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the Napoleon complex. Baby boy. Like, the wrong person. <laughs> the Napoleon complex who like to drive the big ass trucks and who like to live hella heavy, hella heavy weights and all this shit. Hey man, do you? Me, I just like to keep myself self-contained where I can control my own body weight. Period. All right. Any, any more uh, Tiana Taylor? You want to talk about that, Amy? Since uh, you poured that over to you so close, like Just you like, didn't need to say she this. Was late. She, was probably... <laughs> <laughs> she wears a web. She eats whatever she wants, though. She... Yo, she had. She said that she doesn't work out, though. She said like she worked she out for said, that fucking she video. She said she dances. Like, nah, she that, that's yeah, her workout. She worked out she for that fucking video. But she admitted that it's your genetics. She's like, well, I'm sure I that helps. Like I don't know that helps mm-hmm. a lot. She said but, she's yeah. like shit, and she just. But she still worked out for that video. But, 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 but the only thing is, for Tiana, how long is that gonna last? Go ahead, give her a couple years. That's what I'm saying. How long is that gonna last? No, she did some crunches before she got on the video. Something for that fucking video. Go fuck cakes and pies and catch up to that ass. Yeah. That just have that body, like I'm like they can eat like shit and they still kind of have a, like a lean frame. Like shout out to my nigga Dashay, my nigga. Eventually she, your metabolism like, go catch up. Man, too. I don't, I don't play that. Yeah, I, I got like, hella I homies that's that that thin. Be they cut. Like, she be yeah. still and shit. Like though. motherfuckers, they eat all that shit and they stay thin, but no. they ain't got no win, bro. Yeah, like no, no, my boy that, ran around yeah. the corner had a cramp. He was holding yeah. his stomach and shit. Like nigga. man, that metabolism gonna catch up eventually. I outran my bro and I'm not fucking little at all. Yeah, I got some weight on me and he's skinny. Oh, and we, we jogging on a treadmill. He's like, I'm done, man. I'm like, I'm what? Done. Nigga, it's only two miles. What you doing? Damn. <laughs> Let's go. Get this miles. work. Go get playing. this work. Yeah. The family. It's a three-mile three minimum over there here. There you go. That's that's what's up, man. Man, y'all niggas running for a long time. I ain't never got to run for three miles, bro. That shit ended when I got the military. That's, that's at this corner and out, man. Where it, the car keys it. at? We was jumping rope today. Well, that's different. You was forced to do it for so long. You was like, fuck this. For get, real. You, you was getting that work. Man, yeah. I was getting that work. <laughs> that's that PT. Nigga, I was handing out applications, bro. I was there. <laughs> that's, that's that PT right there. Man. But, that's yo, yo, Fresh, man, I didn't even get to do this, man. I mean, Ashley, I already had to... Int- she introduced herself on the last episode uh, she was in. 
man, just tell the audience something about yourself, man. Like, what you do. Because, uh, yeah, man, just tell them about yourself, man. Anything and everything man, you want to share with the world. I be chilling, man. You be I don't chilling? be doing nothing too much, man. Shit, I don't know. All right, let's go through it real quick. Well, I came out here. I'm from L.A., man. So if y'all Raiders fans, Lakers fans, fuck the Clippers, SC, char- <laughs> SC fans, you know what I mean? I fucks with you. I mean, I came down here on some Navy shit. You know, I did eight years in the Navy. So you're a veteran? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm a vet, you know. Thank I, you for your service. Man, that's, man, no, nah, this, this civilian shit is real. Thank y'all for y'all services. Y'all teaching me what that work is about, man. <laughs> that, that military shit was easy. This shit is a whole different animal, my dude. You know what I mean? But I, I kind of, like, came out here for real, man, looking for, for some dope motherfuckers, man. People that was in the art, photography, that's where I kind of, like, start meeting all of y'all, for real. Like, with the photography and, like, spoken word, hip-hop, graffiti, and shit like that. And then, um, what, since I got out the military, now I'm doing little business consulting for some, you know, some people. I've been doing that forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Damn near done with my MBA. I'm not going back to school, though. That shit is done. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, working for this company. It's a tech startup. We just got bought by Google. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, shit. So that shit That's is big. Up, but that's just my mouthpiece got me into that job. Man, I'm a closer, so they they looked at my resume and was like, "This." So yo, you got this. a good finesse game. Man, yeah, brother. I, <laughs> hey. Don't look at me. Hey, <laughs> hey girl, you see us smiling. You see us smiling. Yeah. Like I said, man, this is a Jig is Up podcast first. We have a couple in the house, man. It's lovely. Not every millennial is like me who's single and or like M. Easy who's single. And corn dogs <laughs> and all that shit. Shout out to Nessa. We miss you. Um, yeah. Go out there being a savage. Uh, be man. Very, be very, very careful with what your savagery you out there. Oh, my God. Got? I still got to buy that Don't be giving niggas hickeys. Oh, uh, <laughs> sugar cum. Sugar cum. It's called sugar cum. Yeah, sugar cum. Sugar I still, cum. I'm slacking. Girl, you need to buy it. for Get it for me because I, I keep forgetting it and I'll give you the money. I got you. Like, what the fuck is sugar cum? I oh, feel like I just got set up. No, no, sugar cum. Sweet. Yeah, sugar cum is a, is, a, is a sexual supplement that will make your stuff taste better. For you, it will make your fluid taste better. For her, it will make <laughs> fluid. Her fluid. That's what we're using. It'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll make your nut taste better. It'll make taste better. Taste better. Get some hot Cheeto Thank flavors. Yeah. <laughs> Get some hot Cheeto flavors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hey, it's going down. <laughs> The Y'all jig up. is up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, is <laughs> 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 Nothing is safe. Nothing is safe. Oh no! Man, we can send a baby over to Grandpa. How man? Right. Get- yeah. <laughs> hey. 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 I love it. Sometimes you gotta send the babies away. That's <laughs> the way it is. <laughs> See, you need that grown up baby. time, man. Oh, oh, that's, man. Right. that's when you you call the grandparents and you like come get these kids. Please. Get these Please. A couple hours. So I need a couple hours. She work. needs to get this work. <laughs> a couple hours. She needs to get this work. Oh, man. So, man, this is a good topic because I want to touch on it. Everybody's touching on it. But, man, nothing is safe for my man Chris Brown. Oh, my nigga Chris. This nigga Chris Breezy just can't really escape the long arm of the motherfucking <laughs> law, bro. This dude can't get a break. <laughs> well, the thing was, Chris Brown was asleep, right? And he had, like, squats and shit coming up surrounding his house or something like that. And, uh, but the, how the whole thing, I guess, started was that, uh, you know, he's chilling. I guess he's with Ray J. Ray J's at his house. They're all chilling, having a good time. Whoa. No, it's real shit. Ray J was in the house. Know, <laughs> and um, I, I guess that. someone, I guess a friend of Chris Brown's brought two girls in there. One of them, and the two girls were uninvited and shit. And I think uh, she said something about somebody's jewelry looking fake. And Chris Brown told her to kick rocks and get out the house. But now the new further developments is that that she tried to set him up. She, she's like Ryan Lockby. You know what I mean? She's, dude, she's trying to, you know... Out here making up selling stories. them white lies and shit because now they getting dirt on her saying that she uh had like grand, uh, larceny. grand larceny she had her uh she pageant pageant three taken away saying she was gonna set him up yeah she had a text yeah. saying that she was gonna yeah. set him up this and was... and the thing is it's like this on some real shit if a nigga pull out a gun on you for real and tell you get the fuck out of this house 
What are you going to do? You get the fuck out You the get house. the fuck out of his house and leave him the fuck alone. Thank you me. don't go and say, call the cops, and then not try to talk to the cops, and then put your shit on TMZ no. with a fucking interview. No, no. Hold on, but hold then, on. And, and the cops hadn't even detained Let, Chris Brown just me, yet. You, your ass got in the Uber and went to TMZ to talk about this shit? No, no, You're so traumatized, right, bitch? the fuck out no, of here. No, let me let me tell you what Damn. this bitch did. She had she had it planned from the jump cuz if you look at it this way. You know, uh, I don't know about her saying I didn't know the part about her saying the diamonds is fake. My thought is that the bitch tried to probably steal the diamonds because what is it going to what is it going to push a dude to be like I'm going to pull a gun out on a bitch? Yeah, like well, for real, like Chris I'm just Brown's saying and like stuff, whatever so. like I mean shit, don't I'm come in saying, my house disrespecting my shit at the end of the day. No, and no, then I the woman that. I'm just saying but the woman, she's not fucking stupid. She knows that oh, Chris knows Brown been in trouble. And, and rumor has it that she she's, she uh, she's friends, been, of she's friends with the baby mama, too. Okay. But she has all kinds. Chris Brown is not no fucking angel. Let's be real. Yeah. So if it was me, I'm just saying, if you were really trying to target. get this dude. That's, that's, that's a dude's button yeah. you don't want to push. I'm if you were trying to get this guy. Somebody that you knew was already, like you said earlier, he already got heat on him. He ain't got the best reputation. So anything exactly. that you pull like, out that nigga Chris is automatically, Brown. like, if you got your game set up right, then that dude's going to go down like, for Exactly. Like, is she going to get money either way? Yeah. And, and lawyers are going to come trying to jump on this shit because they want the publicity. Let's yeah, just be but, real. But just to let you guys know if you guys really want to know a nigga with dark skin tendencies look at chris brown that nigga <laughs> Man, has dark skin wait what are you What's saying the you? dark skin what niggas is, is, is <laughs> hold on dark skin are you I've saying known dark you skin? for a whole <laughs> right hand chocolate. brother that's five years almost and you keep saying this dark skin shit i ain't the lightest nigga in the room right now brother what are we talking about because <laughs> you, you every chocolate. time you say something that's hood that's that's really aggressive something that i, I don't know you just always say dark skin i'm starting to What's up, man? What's up? Hey, man, I had to separate it because they always, uh, light skin synonymous with being soft. So, therefore, I have to make that counterbalance. I don't get it. Hold on. I feel like that's the problem with black people today. That's why we can't do shit. According to colorism, his information. According to his information, I'm white with dark skin tendencies, so I don't know what the hell. Uh, <laughs> At least we all want to. Uh, nah, I didn't say that. I just said, I just call you Jamal. Well, no, but I'm saying. No, <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying. Remember House Party 2? What I'm saying is, your definition of light skin and dark skin. I would be white with dark skin tendencies is what I'm trying to say. Like, that's my point. Like, yeah, kind of sort of. That's the way it goes. <laughs> that's the way it is. You could ask. My, we just had this conversation today before I came over here. My wife was talking about, I'm the, I don't care. Like, I'm the loudest dude out. That's a white mic. i hard as shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's really down for the culture. But, but yeah, I mean, damn. But, like, man, that setup is crazy. Like, I, that's the thing. Like, if she would have been black, no one would give a fuck. I'm sorry. She was black. They were like, hey, shut your ass up, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. But you should, I, I have to say, man, let's call a spade a spade. Know, She's using that white know. privilege, bro. I mean, because I no know. one wouldn't give a say, fuck. Because think was, about nah, it. The stalker, the stalker was a black chick that came in his house. And he did not pull a gun on her. He called the police and the police came hella late. I'm just saying, man. Like, she showed up in this nigga's house eating his food. Marco. In her, in the bathtub. Marco. What's up? In a bathtub. It's hot. <laughs> In the sheets, chilling. <laughs> what it is is Hollywood versus Chris Brown. Even if the yeah. girl's black, they yeah. still have been like Chris yeah, Brown's a piece of that's shit. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mm. I think it's it could, could be have that. been a dude in there <laughs> just chilling, and he he would have got that same work. He would have got that same work. Seriously, <laughs> man. He might have caught some hands. You know, a yeah, hands but like, but like yeah. Nah, I that, that nigga would have got jumped. Too, like, you know what I mean, like, I don't, I don't think it was a race thing. I just think that yeah, it's the way that she. That she publicized it. Like you said, bitch, if you were that traumatized, why are you Ubering over to TMZ? Yeah. Like, if it would have been a black girl, yeah, it would have been the same scenario. Hold up. You know what I mean? She, she Ubered over to TMZ. She went yeah. to TMZ yeah. for she the interview. Out of interview. all people, yeah. no, she, she went, went, went straight to TMZ. Not CNN, and she not went Fox to News. Uh, yeah. None of that shit. The and bitch worked for TMZ. I don't give a damn. <laughs> the bitch worked for TMZ. She went to Please. Hollywood too. Oh. Same night. Same night. This bitch is trying to get public. We're, she we're know what she doing. Man. If she was that traumatized, it would have just been the cops. Probably. This bitch know what she doing. Fuck out of here. Alex Hutchins. Oh, yeah. Oh, Alex yeah. Hutchins works for there. Yeah. Shout out to her. I follow him. Me, me too. <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, the fuck, man? The hell is going on with this bullshit? And he yeah. Facebook live the whole thing. Yeah, he Facebook like, live the whole thing. For like two, three hours. He, he was, was Facebook like, live and talking about the police are outside my door. I was just asleep. I don't know what happened. 
and now they bugging. They came to the door, and I said, you could come back when you got a warrant, a warrant with you idiots. You don't find nothing anyway. And then they and arrested they did him. It. Yeah, they didn't find shit. They and didn't then find they arrested shit. him anyway, yeah. and he posted his $250,000 bail. Now he's back home. I, it's because he's Chris Brown. As yeah. much as it is, it's because it's Chris Brown. What for, though? Did, like, did, because did because of the hot they and did what you guys she see, said uh, was yeah. what she said was held him hostage, like put a gun and then held him like it was like a hostage situation. Wasn't a house full of people in there? Or? That's what it, yeah, that's the whole thing. Like it doesn't Ray even make J sense to me. Like it yeah, doesn't Ray even Ray make was sense there. to me. He backs like, up Chris Brown. So, okay, but Ray J's word don't mean shit to nobody. Ray J's word don't mean shit to nobody. Damn. Sorry, Brandy's saying, brother. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm, 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 I mean, I got, like, I got to think it's Ray J, but we've all seen him push that bitch in the pool. We've all seen all the shit that he does. Yeah. Wait, Mo he pushed the bitch in the pool? Okay, when he was on Love & Hip Hop, this bitch was talking Wait, Chris shit. Chris Brown? Oh, no, 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 Ray J. Ray J. Ray J. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Chris Brown. I don't even watch that shit, but go ahead. Well, I know. I just yeah, saw the scene. I just saw the scene. She threw uh, champagne in his face, and she got up and got mad, and he said, you know what, bitch? And just pushed her to the pool next to the table, oh, and it walked off. Wait, I, <laughs> that's I, some I, funny I shit though. Her in the pool too, if I got champagne. No, 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 no. She deserved to get thrown in the motherfucking pool. Ain't no doubt yeah. about oh, that shit. Oh, but I'm just saying. Don't, but it's still Ray is is Ray J. And people don't yeah, look at Ray, Ray J. J. They, Nigga, they, he hit it first, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, damn. So yeah, he did a little too many interviews. Nobody talks about that. <laughs> yeah, that didn't get him. Ray J. Bless his heart. But yeah, man. It, yeah. I mean, Chris Brown is all the setup, bro. I hope he yeah. has some. I mean, I know you got some dope ass lawyers on deck because he'll be straight. Yeah, you, you know be straight. he's got. You be you alright, man. Got some you still have right custody of your child. You still have your millions of dollars. You're still gonna make some hits. You're still gonna go on tour. Who brought this a... broad into the house? And one of his friends. Well, and that, was that wasn't his friend. friend. That was, was his friend. And that no, was, no more. Not no more. <laughs> that that hey, motherfucker ain't around my... Nigga, you better be... Hey, no you gotta more. be like your nemesis, Drake. No new friends, nigga. Yep. That motherfucker ain't... No, yeah. no, no, no. That motherfucker ain't coming around. Blood, it's gotta man. be hard to be a celebrity. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Chris no Brown, man. Especially he if needed... you like Chris Brown. And Chris Brown need to chill with that whole blood thing, man. You from Tappahannock, Virginia, my nigga. He that in. When did he become a gangbanger? He's not. Oh, yeah. He's not. Yeah. I when remember this nigga when he was dancing on TV. When he moved, when he moved oh, to, LA. to L.A. When, when he, he moved, moved to L.A. LA. When he moved Harvard? to L.A. I remember one no, episode. He's from Virginia. <laughs> he's from Tappahannock, from Virginia. From Virginia. Yeah. He's from Tappahannock, Virginia. Chris Brown is from Virginia. But the he's thing little... was, uh, I saw him on TMZ one time, and he was chilling with Tiger, and then he talked about the prop paparazzi, and he said, "Man, these niggas weenies, blood." I'm like, "Yo, what <laughs> with Tiger, with yeah, like, dude, wow. Tiger was on a Hold fucking." On reality show about being from a rich neighborhood who could rap like that yeah, he was actually he was claimed real, to fame it like, off on you and now he's a you gangster went to Morris, you mean to tell me blood ain't came out your mouth hell ever? no nigga because i, I knew that i lived nigga i lived on 40th and hilltop that is a crip neighborhood that's seven blocks away from neighborhood crip when I get you know what i mean so out. like i, I seen <laughs> both sides of the spectrum and i looked at both of these niggas like y'all dumb you Nigga, right here, for for old black nigga, you stupid. Skyline nigga, you stupid. Hold on, don't be getting jumped up in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just saying my opinion. He just picked point. <laughs> no, that's real. I, for you know, one, like, have no problem with you know, any of y'all. And, and, and yeah. the dumbest, Some of y'all are my homies Marco's I've seen saying. in the street, so... You know what I'm saying? Mark, we all good. And the, and the dumbest views, thing, the dumbest thing, no, no. The dumbest thing one of my teammates said, who who officially backs up the set. I hate that shit when people say that. I back up the set. Nah, nigga, are you in the gang or not? No, he's affiliated. Or, or affiliated. What, what the, the fuck, fuck is that? Is that That's a halftime <laughs> gangbanger? Yeah, he part-time. Yeah. Part-time? You know? That's Chris Brown. But anyway, That's what Chris Brown is. Well, anyway, one of, one of my teammates of a gang affiliate, I guess, and he said, hey, what do Crips do? I'm like, the same fucking thing y'all niggas do. What the fuck, man? <laughs> like, they say the letter C. The That's same fucking thing. Y'all fucking wear colors. Y'all bang on each other. Y'all try to find some ratchet bitches to fuck. Y'all smoke weed and play Madden. Y'all do the same <laughs> fucking thing. Can I say something? Can I say something? You don't ever know, though, because there might be a reason why if... If it, like if anybody ever decided to be a gang member at a time, what is the good? Why do you feel like people get involved? It's got to be something deeper than that. Some people do it because it's cool, but some people got fucked up. Junior, no, 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 like, no, like, no like, to there, be in a there, gang. I know or any yeah. kind of crew or I know, or, I know people. Yeah. I know, I know people like that shit is like a lineage. It's like bloodline. It's like your grandma did it, yeah, your your mama family. did your it. Grandma? That means yeah, no, yeah nigga. I'm telling you, it goes no. deep. It goes back. It goes, it goes deep. Back. What does that mean though? Like nigga, like you can have a, a whole family of alcoholics. Don't mean you gotta pick up a bottle. Like that shit is a weak ass excuse, bro. No, no, like yeah. you I mean, I'm with you on that. 
But the thing is, it's like they're a product of their environment and not trying to be yeah. have the but environment being a product of them. Just, the just ask Schoolboy Q. He talked about his grandma put like yeah. bringing him up in the game bang environment. And his that's crazy. Grandmother. And the crazy, Bruh. it's kind of like it's kind of like eating certain food that kills you. You know what I mean? You know this shit kills you if you decide to eat it. Well, you know like leading that, down no, this lifestyle, you know leading this certain <laughs> lifestyle is going to get you no, killed, you homie. Get no excuses. You get no fucking excuses, bro. <laughs> For real. No, no because look, let's put it this <laughs> way. Uh-huh. Everybody knows smoking kills you, right? Yeah, when exactly. When I was a kid, I was small as fuck. I remember being in the house with my mom and my cousin. And they were grown as fuck. And somebody had a cigarette left in the ashtray. I took a puff of it. The shit hurt. A, a cough. Nigga, I'm not smoking cigarettes no more. Went to school. They said, hey, this shit kills you. I don't give a fuck if y'all smoke cigarettes. I'm not fucking with cigarettes. You <laughs> no. feel me? Like Because you made dumb. up your mind. Yeah, but like. Well, it's the, the, same, the, it's the same aspect. No, well, well to not to gang, add to it. When it comes to being in the gang, no, you can do the same shit. You can just walk away. Well, t- no, you can't. Yes, you no, can. you can't. Yes, you can. You can, but you can't because some can. niggas will not let you I leave. Hear what I hear what you're saying. but Yeah, it depends on the situation. Yeah, you can still walk away. No. This nigga try to hit you with that blood in, blood out crap. I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. This, and this yes, shit all stems from, like, People being exposed to other environments. And I can speak, I'm speaking from my thing, because when I was in LA, I, I banged hard. Like, I, the only difference for me was I was a good athlete. I was hella good in, in, at school. Like, I had a 4.0 GPA, but the area that I was in was gang infested. Like, I, I grew up in the jungles. I went to Beverly Hills High School, and I played football since I was about seven years old. Pop so, learning. you know what I mean? Like, I had all the influences. The only thing that separated me from other people that grew up in the jungles was they never seen anything outside of the jungles. Mm. But even if you got positive influence, it ain't got to be in your family, bro. It could be your boy. It could be his pops. It could be his cousin. It could be some motherfucker you see on TV. Like, if you decide to be a fuck up, you decide to be a fuck up. And somebody say, look, you going to hop in this car with these niggas and somebody going to arrest you because y'all doing some bullshit. And then it happened. Nigga, you got your dumb ass in the car, bro. And you know, you know what's funny about that? Like, when I was growing up, most of the people that was telling me some shit like that was the OGs. And they was gangsters. It was like, nigga, nah, dude, just keep your head in the books, man. Fuck yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah. Well, that's it's the way it goes now. They don't want you to do well, A I mean, lot of them don't want you to do that shit. It's the younger ones that are still trying to figure yeah, out what they want to do with their peers. life. Trying yeah. to force you to do shit. The OGs is like, look, I don't want you to do the same shit. You I'm don't doing. have to do this shit, man. Look, like, like, look, at, look at, like, okay, so, like, to go with celebrities, look at, like, the game and the Robin Hood project. He out there trying to give money to everyone in the hood to keep him out the hood. He did that whole documentary. And he said the one thing he wished he could do to, in, in Compton is get the guns out of Compton. Even though he talks about toting them and keeping himself safe and killing people and doing what he had to do, he doesn't want that around the kids anymore because then there's no, you know, them bullets with no names ain't hitting the kids. You know, yeah. YG out here putting money in the schools for the kids so that they can stay in school and not do the same shit he's doing. You just have to get the people that are that are willing to do that so that you can keep the rest of them out. But like to the same thing Fresh is saying is you have to have your own thought process. Like everyone I grew up with, they all decided to start their own gang. They all decided to be blood affiliates. I know Crips. I know Bloods. I was never running around wearing all red, wearing all blue. I see. Yeah, I know them, but I'm not with them. You know, I'm pretty much a square when it comes to a lot of that shit. Like, I was not hey, doing any of that shit. Wrong being you gotta just corners, stay. Nigga. Wrong, sharp, sharp corners. You just, tell you you just stay where you at. And Lots I, of apple juice. I tell, I tell my homies like this. Like, call me a fucking square. I love freedom and pussy. So... <laughs> Yeah, that because part. because you get your ass booked, you don't have either none of those two. So I'm just saying, man. I learned I learned watching movies, man. Ricky, Ricky. I'm like, look, I'm not gonna be Ricky, so yeah, I'm chilling. Even yeah. though Ricky should have had lateral movement, and, and, he, <laughs> and, he, and he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't banging. He's just trying to be, you know. That nigga thought his four four would beat the four four. Let's probably get the, pride, yeah, he, the, he pride, get the best. Had he not stopped pride. to take a piss. Oh man! <laughs> Running from the dudes and was like, "I got to piss." No, you got to get away from the dude with the guns. That's yeah, what you're you supposed should, to be doing. Should have been like, "Nigga, you know where you live at? Keep running, do something. <laughs> yeah. Come on, you're not stopping to piss with a dude with a gun chasing you. You dumb as hell." Fuck that! I would have took my chances with those Rottweilers. I'm just yeah, yeah. Hey, like fuck that. I would have took those chances with the Rottweilers. They were like, "Oh fuck it, that quick." Hey, we gonna make this run. My but. thing is why they didn't do the same thing twice when they cut through the houses. Yes, yeah. they could have done that like, twice. They could have that again. Yeah. Like, let's do that again. Fuck Nigga, you ever play uh, GTA you, Online? 
You know GTA damn well. Online, <laughs> nigga, I'm cutting through I houses. Yeah, niggas be cutting. Look. Niggas be trying to kill me and shit. I be cutting you, in and out through houses. I actually had to, you I know actually damn had to do well that for LA's real. Out here, I had to you do know that for LA's real. a grid. Everyone knows LA's a grid. Yeah. And you know damn well that it's every alley connects every street that you're trying to run through. There was no reason to be in the alley and not jumping fences still. And no, like, I'm, no, I'm saying I had to do that out here. I'm, I'm sure. Out here? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah well, what's up? Down the street? What happened? Down the street? Oh, I remember that shit. And downtown? We no, I heard. By my house. These niggas were like, we're coming after this dude. Like, didn't they pull up? Nigga, for what? Because remember the, oh, 40 oh, days, 40 oh, nights shit? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, the I'm walk, that was yeah, real? I'm, yeah, that, yeah, was that real. shit was real. Niggas was getting shot and yeah, shit, Yeah, that, that shit was real. Like, the neighborhood Crips was on some shit. So you know they wrote they wrote up on me, but I thought it was Jay. You know Jay Jonathan, because he they had the same car. They, they I couldn't see nobody. I just heard what up. I'm like, oh what up? It's like, hey, look man, we about to hit this block. If you come back, if we, if we come back around, he's still here. We gonna shoot you. I'm like, Dude, what do I do? I'm like niggas gave me a right chance because maybe because I my, I was cool and shit or something. I don't know, but you know, God was watching me, man. As soon as they sped off, I. Nope. I basically ran down the same street they hit yeah. and cut through a, a street and waited for them to go up the street. And I just went the opposite way. Bro, it's like, that's this is stupid, bro. Kind yeah. of back Yo, to boy, where I, this all started, yeah, though. I, like, come on, man, I don't want to cut you off. No, I'm, just, like, I'm just really, like, I don't understand why people get to the point where they famous and you can pretty much do everything you wanted and then you decide to resort back to the hood, like... Are like these dumbass tactics. Like I don't understand. Well, because that. niggas like to keep it real. Niggas want to represent. Niggas don't. But how is that keeping like, it real? But that, that's the thing, man. We don't know. We still trying to figure this shit out. Like, what is it keeping it? What is it and to keep back, it real? And it's, like, and it's going back to the game. And the going game, back, like, yeah. He moved himself to Beverly Hills. He moved his family out. He's got all this money, but he's still beating up dudes in the Hollywood Hills and putting it on camera. He's getting in fights with undercover police officers at basketball games. He's he's getting in fight with white dudes in Miami that is trying to fight him and he had his had his manager hold him back so uh, he wasn't yeah. going to jail well, again. Stitches or whatever. Yeah, yeah, with stitches. stitches or whatever. But it's just yeah. like it's like that that mentality like it just doesn't go away and it's just like at the same time, bro, like sit back, man. It's just like I'd say with football players like I don't understand you get in all this trouble. Like go to practice, go home. Go to practice, cash your paycheck, go home. Like, there's no reason for you to be out doing all the dumb shit. Like, if you're going to go to dinner, go to dinner. Don't go out to this other stupid shit where you know people is going to be at and trying to Not get in your face. Not making an excuse, but yeah. they young, men, they, they young yeah. niggas with millions of dollars and don't know what to do no, with and it. I, exactly. And I get that. And, and the, way, the way I'm thinking about that, because, uh, like, especially growing up, being a jock is, like, when you're a jock, like, everything is handed to you. Everything is a party. And when mm. you got so many yes men, as long as you're doing your job, you got to think about a professional athlete. They've never been bad. I mean, I don't give a fuck if you're the dude on the bench, last string, last choice on the squad. You made it to the league. Like you said, you've never had any money. All of a sudden, you got dough. And it's not like everybody that's, you know, gets drafted to a a city that's a big market. Mm. Yeah. You got people that's going to these small towns. Fucking Tennessee ain't shit to do in Tennessee. These motherfuckers <laughs> getting in trouble all the time. You know, they they yeah. doing shit off the clock yeah. unless they got yeah. the older dudes. And it's kind of going back to what we're talking about, the gangbanging or pretty yeah. much anything else. It's like you always got to have somebody older to kind of guide you. Because when you're young, you don't know that. you just like, man, I'm out here for the good time until mm. somebody either tells you the consequences or you suffer them yourself. And then you got to change the way that you do things. You know what I mean? Man, with that some being said, change, man. oh, go ahead, go ahead, Meezy. No, nah, I was just saying, some people don't change. They, 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 they actually ways. like. I guess they love that type of life. Like, yeah, that's no, they, nah, they do. They do. Yeah, like, why yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. would you stay? It's like you settled. It makes no sense to me. It's either you gonna progress or you gonna stay where the fuck you at. You know what I mean? Like, it's man, simple. So I know we just, you know, you just uh, briefly mentioned football players, and I know this is a hot topic. <laughs> and the man is here in San Diego playing the Chargers in the preseason game. Talk about none other than Mr. Colin Kaepernick. Uh, uh, Mr. Cap. Cap. Mm-hmm. Captain America himself. Captain Crunch. <laughs> Captain, Captain Crunch? Wow, hold on. Hey, what did you I'm say, what? Mr. Cap? <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how he got his helmet on today, though. Did y'all see that afro? Man, well, yeah, he has a, he has that a, was a righteous put, afro, bro. To, I just <laughs> no, want to know how he got his helmet that's, on. That's that Huey P. Newton. Yeah. yeah. I just uh, want to know how he got his helmet on. Man, he's on his question. That's a legit question. He's on his. He's on his shit. That's all I'm saying. He's on yeah, the I didn't shit. even see him with his. Was that shit popping out the back of his helmet? Like I, I don't didn't. Even I seen him on the sideline. Like, like, bro, yeah, just bro. a little bit. 
But yeah, man, you know, if you've been living under the rock, you know, Colin Kaepernick is not standing up for the United States National Anthem or uh, pledging his allegiance to the flag or anything like that because of the injustice that a lot of um, black people has been facing with law enforcement, especially when it comes to police brutality. And he's just making his uh, sentiment. And, you know, Colin Kaepernick is not the first, nor he will be the last athlete to to make a conscious uh, social, you know, protest uh, to injustice. I mean, it's, it happened before plenty of times for many different athletes. You know, just recently, you can think about uh, the four the four players from the St. Louis Rams who did yeah. the no hands don't up uh, no uh, hands up don't shoot. Yep. You can think about uh, I can't breathe when LeBron James yep. and all the other players in the NBA. You can think the, about the, the WNBA yeah, players the um, protesting. You know what I mean? So yeah. the thing is now, it's, it's funny. The thing about a protest is it's supposed to be inconvenient. You know yeah, what I mean? That's and people, that's the whole point of the protest. And people are like, well, there's a time and place for everything. This I'm is like, the time and place for this it. Is like the, the time is now, it. nigga. That's like why the time is it. now. Why can't he yeah. do it? And I think a Seattle Seahawks just did it too. Uh, Jeremy Lane. I think Jeremy Lane sat down during the national anthem too. So it's going to start I'm, growing. It's going to be an epidemic in the, uh, in the NFL. And the NFL got to, you know, find a way to try to nip it in the bud but nip what Why? in the bud yeah that's exactly. how they're gonna what? that's how they say no oh, you wouldn't you, 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 you can't you can't restrict their freedom of speech yeah you don't yeah, have the well, right to restrict their freedom exactly. of speech yeah, but yeah. that's how the nfl is gonna see it if they see it as a problem like oh my god it's divisive we need to get everybody on board we need mm -hmm. to get you know what i mean well, on board with 32 what? billion dollars and shut the fuck up yeah on board yeah. with what because i heard a few dudes talking about well if i was in my job you know i can't do x y and z i just can't go in there and you know act however i want you know but you got this dude on the football field and i stand up for a national anthem disrespecting all these people i don't but have to stand that's up for not the in the fucking rule book that's not yeah. that's not even as, one as of those rules that you have to as a yeah, veteran, because the backlash rules. he got was saying is in disrespect to the veterans. And as a veteran, how do you feel about that? I give no fucks. Like, it's like, as a veteran, like, you fight, like, I, this ain't the reason I fucking fought, but you fight for people's rights. Like, mm -hmm. and their freedoms. So if you went to fight because you want people in America to have equal jobs, to have the choice to do what they want, well, that's one of the fucking choices. You got to take yeah. the good with the bad. So by this dude sitting down, that's the shit you fought for. That's the shit that I was on the ship for fucking in the middle of Dubai, fucking 170 degrees, fucking sweating my black ass off so this nigga can sit down or he can stand up. And I can tell you from my, I never stood up for the national anthem. I never saluted. I never did anything. I just fucking stood there at attention. Like, when I was, ever since I was a kid, I never fucking saluted the flag or any of that shit, mm -hmm. man. Like, you know, it was the way that I was raised. But I, I think as a veteran, that's not anything that would disrespect me. If anything, it's like, dude, that, that dude You're is You're exercising righteous. your right. Yeah, and that's And that's cool. what I'm fighting for. And you, regardless, you know what I mean? It could be a person. It could be a Trump supporter. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. Uh, Hillary supporter. I'm fighting for any and every American yeah. in this to country have a voice. to to uh, express yourself. Even if we disagree, exactly. Let's have the core fundamentals of saying this is why we sacrifice. Like they want they, that, why they sacrifice. They want to make him a pariah, and it's like he's just being a person who feels that. He needs to get his point across. And right now, he's using the platform that he has to get his point across. It doesn't matter that he makes $18 million and that you make $10 an hour. Because you could make the same point. You're just not going to get it seen. He's getting it seen for not just himself, but for everyone else who's in the same situation and he's, he's taking in. a huge risk doing yeah. it. Because he could lose his job. No, he, he could be just job. like, uh, what's his name, in the NBA? Uh, uh, my, 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 yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. That dude yeah. lost his job. The he other guy, and the guy for the, the, the Bulls, Bulls when they won the Bulls. championship and he gave George Bush that letter, never had a job again, saying this is what you need to do to help the country when he went and met the president after they won a championship. So he's over here taking a chance to lose his job, and you guys are over here getting mad at him because, you know, he gets the chance to make $19 million a year. He wasn't complaining when he was, you know, given the chance to play football. But it's like, Mind it doesn't you, he's matter. been sitting down throughout the whole preseason. They yeah, just it, found out after yeah, week three. So. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. it, do, it it's just ridiculous. And, and from, from, from that, I just see it as like man he's exercising his right and he made it clear this is not about the veterans this is about the police brutality that's going on in america we need to make this address and i can't stand the fucking rhetoric of 
love it or leave it. This is America. No. Love it or leave it. I'm like, why can't we make America better? You know what I mean? Like when when Donald Trump had that whole slogan, make America great again, America is a great country. What do you mean? Like, when was it not great? Yeah. Why can't you just try to improve it and make it better? Yeah. Why Why do you feel America is shitty? But no one's getting at Donald Trump about that slogan, right? Now, my whole thing no is one's getting at him. Make it great again. When again are you referring yeah. to? Yeah, like, right. what year? What date were you referring to? Because yeah, right. look, a, if you want to go back to what he's talking, he's talking about the fifties when they was, you know, when people didn't have the same rights. Like when it was, we had all the money after the wars that we fought. We everyone had jobs because we were at war Mind all the you, time. There are black it. men who fought these wars. There are minorities they who came fought these back wars. They came back home and couldn't get shit. Buffalo soldiers. Yeah, so exactly. great for who? Exactly. That, who was it great for? <laughs> and then it's the same Seriously. thing. It's the same thing for the third stanza of the national anthem. Yeah. That no one talks about. I, I've got it right here. And how was and how was it? And then how was it great when they had a the, great and here's the deal. The dude, they anyway, say so. they say that he was he was a prisoner. He was on a boat fighting to get his other soldiers back. And in there, he decided he needed to write down that the like what the is black, it? Says, no refuge could save yeah. the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the Star Spangled Banner in triumph doth wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. So he literally just said that slaves died. And they're not free because there was a group of black men who fighting were for free. the British. They went to the British and asked to become soldiers. They came back. They whooped his ass in a fight. He ran away. And then the next time he got in a fight, he was over here trying to save one of his soldiers. And in his mind, he was still mad that black men who at the time weren't considered to be anything could come in and beat him and his soldiers. Mm -hmm. And he wrote some shit about that. And how so basically they were it's going a diss to track. die. It was a so, diss track. Yeah. So fuck him. You know what I'm saying? And fuck all everyone else who wants to be mad about the fact that this man is standing up for his right to protect himself and his people. And this is coming from a and white guy. And it's a freedom of speech. If anything else, it'd be like, it's freedom of speech at the end of the day. Like, this is what we want to so be about. We want to be about, like, you know, our rights as Americans at the end of the day. He's exercising his and and, and, and oh, another God. thing I hate the thing is it's like oh you making nineteen millions of dollars why don't you just shut the fuck up be a good old little boy and tap dance and throw that football mm. you might as well just say put your black face on yeah go go ahead tap dance and throw that football yeah. nigger you making nineteen million dollars nigger why you give a fuck nigger that's the house nigger that's syndrome. you know that's what I mean what yeah. that's what you really it's saying like, yeah we giving you a, we we, we took that's, you off the you might as well say that homie you might as well say that. You might as well just say, you making $19 million, nigga. Go ahead. Don't shut the fuck up. It's like, if that nigga didn't have $19 million, he would be just like me. He would be just like my man Kmart. No, not just even like, that. Like, just just like all of us who could be liable. And I mean, even with all that money, you still get fucked and bothered by the police. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and But that's what he's trying to say. He's like, fuck the money. I'm still black. I'm still a human being. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still want to, I want to give a voice to the voiceless, but people seeing it as him being, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know how these right ring people think. Um, I know, I know a person perfectly. I want to get him on the show. Brad Bittler. I know he's a right ring, second amendment law, Donald Trump supporter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Brad Bittler. Mm hmm. Brad Bittler. Because I want to have his point of view. Yeah, if you don't and that's get that the thing. point of view, you yeah. don't understand. I will have to understand where he's coming from, like the Rush Limbaugh's and all that stuff. But I could just say, give you my experience and my perspective as a young black male in America that some people, some of y'all just don't understand. When, when you guys try to tote the line and say, oh, you know, just a time and place for everything, motherfucker, your family hasn't been hemmed up by the police. Your family hasn't had suffered years in, of uh, segregation Jim Crow laws, housing discrimination, no loans from banks, none of that shit. Y'all didn't experience having your veterans coming back home and getting nothing but motherfucking hair on needles up in their arms. Y'all didn't experience none of that shit. Y'all y'all ancestors had never experienced by getting taken from one country to another and having motherfuckers dying cramped up inside of a boat, smelling like shit, piss, dead person next to them, getting hung for no reason. All that shit. So please miss me with that bullshit. You act like you understand, but you really don't, bro. All, all I'd rather for a person to say, hey, I don't understand shit what you guys are going through. Enlighten me. Maybe we could figure some shit out. Because that's the thing. It's like, America, we have to be better. 
We have to, I mean, we have to be better. And this is the things that the grievances that Colin Kaepernick is bringing up. He's like, yo, there's some shit that we still need to fix. Well, oh no, America's great. America's great. Because you don't like it, you just leave it. Go back. I have never seen any, uh, Timothy McVeigh, perfect example. A domestic terrorist has some shit about America. Did they ever tell Tim Timothy McVeigh to go back home? No. No, you know they gave mean? him money for his book. Hold up, and you know the fact that they brought up that the fact was like, oh, like, I forgot old girl's name. What's the girl from that newscast and show that's always flapping her guns? Yeah, that stupid Tommy bitch. Yeah, yeah like, she oh, was Tommy like, Lauren. And Tommy yeah. Lauren didn't even, she didn't even pay attention. She didn't, she didn't, because she the shit that she was. She never, never looks at the bigger point. She, she has, never uh, looks at the bigger picture she, ever. She, she but has what a I'm show saying. She's called news and all she does is state opinions all the time. Yeah, yeah. No, she has said, she has said, she's all, oh, we're so bad, you were adopted by white parents. I guess we're fucking. Horrible well, because always we means, fucking adopted well, you. Okay, did you guys like, see that video? <laughs> did you see the video on yeah, Facebook? That it. dude that always oh. he's yeah. always making these random videos. Yeah, yeah. He went in on her about he never said anything about the veterans. Yeah, he never he never said anything. said anything about white people. He never said anything about this. And then he said, Let me let me turn my words against you. <laughs> oh, if white people have to walk on eggshells, oh, you don't like it? Why don't you take your own advice? And then he plays a clip of her saying, Leave. Look, it's the same shit. She just runs her mouth and doesn't know what the fuck Man, she's talking about. Man, don't give about. Tommy Lauren any type of attention. She wants to be fucking Ann Coulter, fucking Bill O'Reilly. She wants to be on Fox News Squad so bad. She, she, you know, <laughs> Stacey Dash. Oh, whatever, man. Like, everybody's going to have opposing views, but that's great and all. Yes, but yes, I do want to have a guy like Brad oh, Bittler on here, oh, even though we may disagree a lot. On a lot of shit, but it would be great just because I just want to know just a little well, bit I where he's a coming dude from. That you should bring on, man. Like it's my dude. His name Brandon Hampton. He's he's dope. Like he he's like far right, but he's like he's on his own shit. He actually does say yeah, some shit that gets but, you thinking. But, like, but yeah, man. I mean, that's what it's all about: having a conversation so, and having a better chance to understand back, each other. Back to your point, like I can't say like like you said, I don't understand the situations that you guys go through. But I can say that growing up, mm -hmm. I had been hanging around with the people I shouldn't have been hanging around with. Uh huh. I got fucked with by the police on a regular basis. Ooh. And now, now in my life now, with my wife being black, mm -hmm. when I'm in the car by myself, please don't fuck with me. They don't do nothing. They don't give a shit. They will literally ride our coattails when we're both in the car together. I, I know they're looking up license plates. They're doing whatever the fuck they're doing. Mm -hmm. There's there's older white people who will drive and stare in our car while we're driving together and just whatever, give us mean looks. They'll fucking drive crazy in front of us. They'll brake check us. They'll ride our asses from behind. Damn. Like, I, I'm i telling you right now, like, I would not realized, I can honestly say I had not realized until I got into a relationship with a black woman of a lot of the hardships that go on. Like I, I always stood there and I was like, yeah, you see the situations. You're like, that's fucked up. You know, it's fucked now up. Now you have a but small now you live taste in of it. it right? So like, and like I've said before, like I, I, I had my hair braided. We had been in the wrong neighborhood. We got pulled over. The dude took all my information, came back and asked me who owned my car. And when I told him that I owned it, he told me I didn't own my car. <laughs> and when I told him that my aunt's name was on the registration because she co-signed with me and that we both own the car, you know, it, it, it's happened before. Like, I witness it on a regular basis. Like, I get dirty looks. We, you know, it, it, it's, it's disgusting. And I honestly, every day of my life, when I walk out the door with my wife, I don't know if I'm going to have someone talk shit to me, if I'm going to have someone tell me that they think our love is great, if they think our kids are great, or if they think that, you know, having mixed babies is wrong. Like, I go through so much more shit now that I never realized over time then what I've come to realize now is like, it's not something that doesn't exist. Like people want it to not exist. Mm -hmm. And it's like Will Smith said, it's always been happening. It's just now there's always cameras. Now there's social media. You can straight load it straight up onto your phone. You can, yeah, and you can see it and you can see it on the comments too. You can like, do anything yeah. and it hops up automatically. So it's always happened. It's just now it's in the forefront and people are mad because what black people have been trying to do the whole time is get together as a people and just say, we're here. We're going to be great. Let mm -hmm. us be great. We're letting you be great. Let us be great. But for whatever reason, people can't seem to stand that and think that it's an okay thing. So they sit here and say, oh, you guys are just doing this to draw attention. Well, of course, they're trying to draw attention. They want to be treated as human beings and not as 
property and not as half people like they were. They were considered two thirds of a people for how long? Until the 1900s. They couldn't vote. They couldn't do shit. And then after that, when the Constitution said that everybody has the right to vote for all men, other states had laws banning black people because from voting. And, and that's why Martin Luther King had to do that whole march in Selma. And that was in the 1960s. Think about it. It wasn't that long ago. In 1965, ago. dude. That, my mom that was a fucking infant in 1965. That's not long ago. America, we have a long ass way to go for it, for in order to be better. I'm not trying to get too political about it, but that's just my stance. It's like, you know, I'm not trying to make it a black white issue, but I mean, it it is what it is sometimes, but at the end of the day, we just need to be better. America, we just need to be better. You know what I mean? Like, you know, fuck that whole, you know, make America great again. Why don't you just improve and enhance America? Why can't you just look at things as a as a human aspect instead of like, oh, he's he's black and you know, all you know the rhetoric of like, oh man, these all lives, all lives versus black lives. And, and speaking of all lives, for all you all lives motherfuckers out there, um, <laughs> side note, <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you motherfuckers? Where are you guys in the protest? I have not seen not one all lives matter motherfuckers protesting. I seen yeah. you hashtag, but I have not seen you protest. Where happened to the All Lives Matters when old girl who got raped by uh, Brock Turner? That Where was the All Lives Matters you. when uh, old white boy who got killed by the police? Where happened yeah. to the All Lives Matters when someone who's not black yeah, and got the, killed like the Hispanic by the kids, police? Yeah. Or the Hispanic kids. I didn't see you motherfuckers. Nope. So, All Lives Matters motherfuckers. Get your ass out there and protest because the All Lives Matter uh, hashtag don't mean a motherfucking thing. And that's why no, Black Lives it, Matter is making is, is more relevant. Can I, I make a comment on that? Like, I never really understood the whole All Lives Matter. That's common sense. Okay, All Lives Matter. I get it. But at the end of the day, it's dumb as fuck to say it because right now, All Lives are not the issue. They're talking about the issue of that the treatment black of the black are, citizens are, yeah, in this country are getting killed so how dumb as fuck am i to be like if we're talking about freaking you know aids and everything like you know what i mean we're talking about aids right yeah, now all who am STDs i to come matters. and be like well can't if all stds matters cancer matters like we freaking get it that makes sense but it's like we're not talking about freaking cancer right now we're talking about aids so I did the same thing goes with Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. That's what it is. It's like right now we're talking about the issue at hand, which is black people, like our black children are getting killed right now. And, and men and, and our people are getting mistreated. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about all lives because all lives are not the issue right now. Mm -hmm. So it just it, it just doesn't make sense when people bring up that all lives matter shit. Like I get it, but that's so just not the problem. When you have... Since they got the, what they got the all lives matters, they got the blue lives matters, they got the nigga all the colors matter. Right? Well, 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 it's, well, well, when, it, when you talk about blue lives matter, it's like nigga that is a uniform, my nigga. <laughs> you put on a uniform that is blue. Okay, I get that. When you take that shit off, either you're white, you're black, you're Asian, oh, you're Mexican. No, that's, that's you know what, what I mean? To. That's what I'm getting to. Because, yeah. Like, I, besides all the other shit I do, I'm the I'm the vice president for Urban League, San Diego. And we got these political comedians all all the time. And the last one we had was, it was a um, forum of police officers that were minorities, and they were expressing the same thing that we expressing. You know, or that we mm -hmm. talking about right now in this room. Yeah. So even though somebody might step into that blue uniform, you know, like you got people that are minorities, and they're like, yeah, when I'm in this uniform. You know what I mean? I still want to stand up for my people, but my people are throwing me hate because I'm wearing this uniform. Then on the out on the inside of this force, you know, I'm looked down upon because I am a minority. And they use that against me to, you know, because I look like everybody else. Why don't you go into the neighborhood and you we need you to bring up these many people on these charges, even if they didn't do anything. So, you know, they get in they get in both ways. And then when they take the jersey off, then they they just a colored person, and then they get persecuted by the people in these uniforms. And I had to talk to somebody be about this because 
the guy that I was talking to, he's in the Urban League. When he was in the military, he was a military police officer. Now he's a like a crongish man. But that's all he does is talk to stuff like this. And it seemed like those dudes really have a hard time because I don't like cops. I fucking hate cops. And he brought up the pen. He was like, so what happens if you're in a neighborhood? You know, and it's a minority cop. It's a skeepism. It's a minority cop and he gets shot. Do you call? What do you do? Do you help him or and half the room just stood there? You know, but and then when you just, like how you said, why can't people, you know, you just look at people as people and not as colors? Because if you would have took that uniform off of him, then he would have been just like you. He got a family, he got a kid, he got a wife. Exactly. You know, and yeah. I, I took the same standpoint when I was in the military because I don't stand for a lot of the things that, you know, they represent. But I had to recognize when I stepped into that uniform, you know, my personal bias had to go to the sideline. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I, like, for real, I don't think it's... Black Lives Matter is why, I think at the end of the day, man, it's just like you said, man, people need to come together as, you know, no matter how you do it, you know, because even with how you said, man, like now everything's on videotape. Everybody got a camera. Everybody mm -hmm. can, you know, put their media or they Nothing video is up. safe. But if everybody looking through different lenses, it don't mean the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we got us, you know, we, we see something one way. Then a white chick that's trying to be on Fox News, she see it another way. But that's... That these people represent a larger community. Yeah. So if it's still all it's doing, I think is how you said we want to come together to be great. Yeah. You know. So for those individual races or those people that might like that, you know, they're gonna gravitate towards the message they want to hear. But I think at the same time, it's making us stronger as a people. You know, because it's not like everybody that's on the Black Lives Matter that sees, you know, some kind of discrimination is all of a sudden, you know, racist. Are they all of a sudden? No, and that's the and that's the paint. That's the picture they're trying to paint. Is like all oh, these Black Lives Matters, like your guys are extremists you guys are doing this and causing violence you guys i mean they're basically comparing them to isis like no they said it, that they're a hate group yeah they're, they're, they're a hate group but what the thing is group. but the thing is that okay, if they would have did group. their research and know that black lives matter is a group that is trying to bring awareness of the all the, all the discriminatory actions happening to black people you know what i mean like in the law enforcement is like when all when i watched that video when alton sterling got killed bro and the one of the cops like fuck him just leave him like, bro, how, like, like, that's a human being dying. And you just say, fuck him, just leave him like he ain't shit. And, and there was one guy, it happened in a different instance, uh, incident. One cop was like, oh, fuck, man, I'm going to just do desk work. Really? Wow. That's how you feel? Desk work? You know what I mean? You still have a job, and, and it's crazy because by law, like, a cop, they say if you have a certain experience or something like that, you have the right to shoot and kill. But it's like, man, like, and, and I know... Like and I understand yeah, but... cops. I understand cops. They're 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 on the line of duty, and, and people say this all the time. But it's true, man. Like if you're a cop, I know you get scared and all this stuff. But Jesse Williams said it best, man. We gotta learn how to de-escalate the situation first, man. Learn how to talk and negotiate first. I think there's a country, uh, European, maybe Switzerland or Poland or something like that out there. It for them to be in the police academy, it takes three years to to graduate. It's a three year study. And what they taught the most is how to de-escalate the situation with negotiation and talking before they had to use force. In America, what? fuck that. And that was the point. <laughs> and that's another point that Colin Kaepernick made when they six months him, of training. You get six months. You're on the force. You have to take three years of school to be a cosmetologist to do hair, so that you don't burn someone's scalp, so you don't cut someone's ear. But six months, they teach you how to use a gun, de-escalate a situation, and do all this other shit. And it's, it's like... It's in ridiculous. six months? In six months. That's how long it takes to train to be yeah. a police officer. It's, and it they'll does, hire anybody. Yeah. Have you, have you, if you walk around San Diego now, on the side of buses, on the bumper stickers on the back of police cars, now hiring... Hi, uh, deputies, you know, sure, yeah, deputies. When I was in... Uh, go to, go to um, SDSheriff.com and apply was, right now. Like When I be in L.A., LAPD be hiring. They be, they'll try to scoop me up. Yeah, anybody, everybody, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, nah, it's I'm like, cool, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, man, at the end of the day, like, all, all these uniformed forces is just a microcosm of society. Like, mm. perfect example, when, when Obama got elected, I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, bro. We out there, it's nobody around us. Like, they took a photo op, and you seen three little ships and motherfucking just ocean. Like, if everybody drowned, nigga, we all dead. And mm. when he got elected, all of a sudden, you seen people on the ship with they pillowcases as confederate flags wow 
Where'd that come from? You got people in higher ranking positions at at quarters where we all together in a whole ship talking about, I hope you get assassinated. That's your commander in chief. Wow. You're in the military. That's, your that's boss, who right? you that's Damn. that's your boss. That's the dude that wow. you're supposed to be able to ride for no matter what. So that can, it goes back to what I'm saying. Like, no matter if we in another country or we in this country, like it, you, you still get the same population of people. You know, it, it kind of yeah. sucks that you got the six months, but fuck the six months. Cause if it's already in their called, psyche ever since the, yeah, as and, a kid. And if it's not, you know, I, I understand they take certain psychological tests and they got yeah. training they go through, but that should be your first action anyways to de-escalate the situation. And if you feel like you're in a position where you're scared or you honestly, if you were just a bitch or a pussy, you shouldn't put a uniform on. You shouldn't get into a situation where you got to protect somebody else's life, especially if you're the one with a weapon. If you keep if you if you're a traffic cop and you're scared to pull somebody over fucking get a desk job work at mcdonald's bro because you're not only gonna injure yourself you probably gonna pull the trigger too fast you know and this is another example this dude brought up when it was a situation where it was a guy in the city he was he was mentally ill he had a knife and he was surrounded by cops and all the cops are trying to de-escalate the situation they're saying hey you know calm down and they understand that he has a mental illness a, a white cop pulled up Five seconds, got out the car, lit him up, bang, killed this dude. Mm. You know, but it's like, why are you fearing for your life if everybody else was straight? Like, why didn't you try to de-escalate the situation in the same situation everybody else did? And that's just showing you, like, no matter what the process is, you always going to have somebody with a flaw or somebody that's not supposed to be in that situation. And it's right. like you've seen, I, like, I, I, see, I saw a video they did, like, a comparison video. Like, there was a little boy. And I, you could see in the video, he was a little boy. And he walked towards the police officers while they had the guns out towards him. And they literally emptied their clips into this little boy, what? right? What? But then they showed the comparison video. video and it was out here, that 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 crazy white dude that was in oh, OB. Mission, yeah. and, and, and he was mission, out here yeah. at Mission, mission Bay. Beach. And everyone mission was Bay, hiding yeah. in the... All the kids were hiding in the bathrooms. All the parents were hiding in the bathrooms. They sat there for three hours trying to talk talking him to him down, down to put the gun down. He wouldn't put the gun down. One dude put a bullet in his leg. The dude got back up with his gun and continued to go at the police. And they did not fire more bullets at him. They waited and then someone finally put him down when he put the gun down and then arrested him. But there was another... I'm just... Like, it... it you have to know how to de-escalate the situation. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me that you would think a little boy at 12, 13 years old is going to oh, over here manhandle the shit out. Well, well it's, not, it's not just that because, like, I feel like it's half bullshit. Like, half of the cops are actually scared. The other half just don't give a fuck. No, yeah. yeah and they're yeah, yeah. they, they going to cry with, like, oh, I was scared. It's, oh, it's like, shit. It's like one of, my favorite, one of my favorite lines is, like, from KRS-1 in Sound of the Police. When he compares, he goes, overseer. Overseer, now say it faster. Overseer, overseer, officer, 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 officer. It's the same thing. They pretty much came from riding around on plantations, telling you what to do. You disobeyed. They beat you and killed you. And now you do what they say. They shoot you. You know what I'm saying? It's, and there's no difference. You could tell them to do something. They'll do what you tell them to do. You'll shoot him. He went to get his ID because you asked for his ID. You shot him. He doesn't, actually... do, he doesn't do what you tell him to do. And you shoot him. I've Regardless. Seen, I've seen a few videos. There was one. An officer was actually talking shit about the other officers the way they handled the yeah. situation. He's like, no, and then he gets reprimanded. They're supposed for to de-escalate it. Okay. So yeah, and then there's another video. We've been talking that about it. My bad. Officers having a conversation about how they treat each race differently yeah. in each situation. I mean, it's apparent even here in San Diego. If you live south of the Eight Freeway, you're gonna get treated like shit. Yeah, there's, there's no pretty punishment. much it. How do we change the relate? Because this, oh, like, it's it's all good that everybody in here got examples. I see my majority of people, except for probably except me and you, not mm -hmm. from San Diego, but everybody else is from San Diego. How do you how do you bring the community, like you said, south of basically southeast San Diego? You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you bring the relationships between them and the cops? You know, I don't, I don't how do you know. make it better? And, and Ashley pointed this out to me because she know how much I don't like the cops. Like she knows this, but I can literally point out situations where cops did me good i yeah. mean as much as i don't like them it's not like yeah. everybody not everyone's gonna be yeah. like that but, but yeah. how do you how do you like bring the relationships together and closer like i had 
one of the homies was on Facebook, and I'm really on Facebook, and I know he don't like the cops. And he was talking about how, you know, it was some police officers down at the Food for Less, you know, helping people, you know, older, you know, just basically anybody that was walking out of there with a whole lot of groceries, walking them to their car, helping them, unpacking them, building their community relationships. And the only reason I'm asking this is because I've been in forums like this before, and it's a whole lot of intellectual masturbation. Like, people got all these big <laughs> solutions, and they're talking about shit that's going wrong, but I'm more so like, you know, how can we fix it? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, everybody right. know, everybody know the problem yeah you know but like just like what's some kind of situation get this work how can we get this work to make shit so that it's not you know always a bad situation when you see the cops because even right now if we leave here if a cop pull up behind me bro i'm, I'm all in my rearview mirror growing up in la i can know i know how to drive looking and backwards you know what i mean like it been situations where i was driving down the street and the cops just pulled a light in my car i can't even see in front of me no more yeah you know what i mean but it's like how do you how do you fix that? Or how do you recognize a good cop from a bad cop? Or just... Bruh, I don't, even have, like I don't even have the answer for that. Um, all I can say is, man, like, maybe if you say hi to one... Like, and that's see, my and thing. See, and, and see how they look at you. Check out their demeanor. Check out how they carry themselves. When they, You being a black man in this country, how you greet them. And you greet them politely and respectfully. And they kind of, like, brush you off or something like yeah. that. Okay, I know where you're coming. Maybe you're having a bad day. You know, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you're having a bad day. Maybe you're feeling some type of way. Maybe you're working, like, you know, your 15th hour or whatever you're doing on your ship. But at the end of the day, I'm going to look at your character. I don't give a fuck. You wore that uniform to serve and protect. And I'm, I'm paying oh, tax ahead. dollars for you to go out there and make me feel safe. That is your fucking job, bro. So don't sit here and look at me like I'm a fucking criminal. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a law-abiding citizen. But the thing is, how they carry themselves, how they de- de- their demeanor. And when you say um, they're, are you talking? Are you talking about all of them? Like the certain yeah. cops? Hey. They're as but in you, like certain too. cops. Not but you can't guess who's the bad yeah. cookie at the end of the day. That's my thing because. So like, on, uh, no, so with uh, that, you said you can't see who's the bad cookie. So do you just treat all of them the same? No, no, no. What you just got to do is probably try to be respectful to all of them and see how they re- see how they react to your your advancements to them. Well, see, then what, maybe that's that reaction, and, and what I don't that. understand is like okay so like I remember growing up the police officers came to your school you talked right. to police officers you got police Dare stickers, programs and all that shit we got, got baseball cards stuff. you got you got all your little stuff from them like Charter my kids tattoos. now my kids Boo. my kids Boo. love to wave at the police officers when they drive by we're stopped at a green light or you're not a green what you know we're stopped at a light they, they stay wave the kid you know when, they they want to younger. see the police officers wave and smile back they're like oh look they you know and then as you grow up you start to realize you know things are different but it's like where is it that you're at the schools talking to kids talking about how you know you do your job here and here to make sure everyone stays safe but then as those kids are getting older you like just don't give a fuck anymore mm. so this is my this is because I was the same way. I was the kid that went to the D.A.R.E. program. Like, one of my cousins, like, my older cousins, he was a police sheriff in L.A. So, my particular situation was, I told you before, I already grew up around gangs. So, mm-hmm. you know, like, I had my, my double life, I guess you could say. So, what happened with me is I seen one of my uncles get arrested, like, dead in front of me. Like, they didn't give no shits. They threw this dude on the floor, arrested him. He, he's gone. Then I seen the same thing happen to my dad before I never seen him again. Damn. Then when I moved to the better neighborhood, you know, a, a less minority neighborhood, um, cops are still kind of good, you know, doing anything. And then it just so happened when I got to junior high, me and one of my boys was riding our bikes. You know what I mean? You're a kid. You ride your bikes. You have fun. That's what you do. And we got pulled over for no reason on our bikes. And these dudes, mm. I'm thinking they about to give us some cars. I'm sitting down. I'm stopping. I'm excited. And they said, hey, get up against the wall. You know, we um got a report of somebody breaking into cars over here. And um, you guys fit the description. Oh. We're young. And so what does that do? That that takes me back to my dad, my mm-hmm. uncle, everybody else. So it's like, well, damn, I guess, uh, you know, I guess I'm I'm an I'm a, I'm a adult now. I'm no longer a kid. Obviously, you don't see me the same way. So I can't see you the same way. And then it went into other situations. So it's like, damn, now they're against me. Like, it's just like if you're in a relationship and somebody's like, they treating you like you're cheating when you ain't cheating. It's like, well, damn, probably I should just do it. Well, if you treating me like now I'm the I'm enemy, a criminal. Yeah, I, I'm a I might as well be a criminal. Or if I'm not a criminal, now I should look at you the same way you look at me. You, I'm not going to get my respect. For me, that's what made me lose my respect. Because it took me back to those times. And those was painful situations. You're seeing your family leave. You're seeing your 
dad leave. You're seeing people that you care about getting arrested and you don't understand it. You you know, you just understand, you know, bad people that do bad things go to jail, but these are people you care about. And then you get in a situation where you're not doing anything. You being a kid, you're innocent. And then they put you in that situation and you never did anything. So it's like, well, fuck you. If you're going to treat me that way, then fuck y'all. And that, that's been my mentality ever since. You know, I got cops where, put it this way, when I, the first time I thought about getting out of the military, I was like, you know what? I'm so used to this structure. I don't think I'll be able to function at a regular job. I'm going to go into the fire department, which I was going to do when I originally got out of college, or I'm going to go into the police department. One of my best friends from L.A. came down here. This is my still state by SDSU. We pulled over in the front of my house, where I live at, in the front of my house, just kicking in the car, listening to beats freestyling. I got pulled over twice, parked. The fuck? Parked. And to, to, to fuck it, somebody said, it looks like we, we got a report that it was loud music coming from this vehicle and you guys are dealing drugs. Nobody ever came to the car. Wow. It was just me and my boy in there vibing out to make things worse. When later on that night, I got pulled over again because somebody stole my tags. And Damn, they, they told my too. car. So it's like, for me, it's just like when you get to that level to where you, you can really relate to, damn, I'm not doing shit. And it feels like you're being bullied. That's when I started losing well, respect. And, okay. So that happened to me when I was in middle school. I was walking right out in El Cajon, El Cajon PD. I'm walking off the curb. I got a little green dude. I'm safe to walk. This dude speed around the corner. I don't know if it's, but I didn't, I didn't even see the car till after it already finished turning. Right. I almost get hit by a motherfucking car. I see his police officer, whether it was police officer or not, I tell you right now, I would have yelled fuck you to anybody who pulled me like that, right? So I yell fuck you. I realize it's a police officer. I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said some dumb shit like that. But I keep walking anyway. This motherfucker flips a U-turn. You can hear him. You he screeches his tires. He comes around. My boy and I keep walking. He comes around the block. Dude comes or pulls over. You got something to say? Oh, I, I kind of said it. You heard me. Obviously, that's why you U-turned, right, sir? Like, I was trying to be respectful enough, but I had an attitude, you know, because mm -hmm. fuck you. Like I said before, you almost hit me. I said, well, you almost hit me with your car. Well, when I have my lights on, I can do whatever I need to do as a safe situation. I'm like, but your lights were never on, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. Something, something. I'm like, okay, oh, but here's man. the deal, bro. You, I, I literally, I kept hitting him with facts. I was like, look, you, you almost hit me. I could have died. You wouldn't want that paperwork. You don't want none of that shit. You never turned your lights on. How are you going to explain you had your lights on when everyone around this fucking block knows you didn't have your lights on? You, and he's like, I, li I swear to God, he goes back to his car and he like turns around and he goes, you know, you guys are the future. We got to start looking up. I'm like, no, can you just get in your car and leave? Like, I'm sitting here in the back of my mind. Yeah, like, can you get like, in your car and leave? Just leave me alone. Like, what are you still yelling at me for? Like, why are you still he trying to lecture me? He was going through some shit like, and decided to take it out on you. Well, and I get that. And I, but it's, it's just like, like he was just saying the same aspect. Like, after that, I'm like, man, fuck the police. Fuck anything they ever want to say to me. I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, it's, a, it's a rough relationship with minorities and disenfranchised people um, and, and law enforcement. It, it's, that has to, uh, you know, that has to get better. I don't have the answer for it, but I think at least I'm putting on the platform that we could talk about it. Yeah, no, you know, do an outreach on it. You know what I mean? Uh, anything else? <laughs> Motherfuckers need hugs. That's it. <laughs> hey, that dude. Love that dude is the answer. Around around all them hugs. No, no. Love is the answer. Head is the answer. Where did Kendrick Lamar? Look, hold up. Head is hold the answer. Up. Head, is the answer. Up. Head is the future. <laughs> He's gonna jump from okay, that no. to that. <laughs> hey, but I have I have a question for the All Lives Matter people. Uh huh. What do you guys? Because like from 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 my perception of it, that generated from the black lives matter hashtag yeah if all lives matter why are you using that to go against black lives matter if y'all could join to black the, lives matter is included in all lives that's part of it i'll let y'all sit on that shit yeah man i know we gotta wrap this up man um you know if you enjoy listening to this podcast follow us on facebook Add us on Twitter, Instagram, at Jiggas Up Pod. If you have any uh, questions, go ahead, get at us. Uh, Jiggas Up Podcast at gmail.com. See any questions, suggestions, comments. Um, you know, you can find me on Twitter. If you can find me on Twitter, you can find anyone else on there. And just let us know what you think. And um, uh, any parting shout outs? I'm going to start off with you, Mr. Dan. Uh, shouts out to y'all earlier. All right. Ball. I hadn't balled in six months, so shit. it was it was it was nice. Yeah, to my be legs out are there. sore as shit. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure every time I'm out here, every time I'm out here, I say it. But uh, shout there out to my wife for CPT. holding down the household. You know what I mean with the babies and everything like that. You know she right. she does she does everything. So you know I appreciate her. 
All right, Antoine, thank you for having uh, coming here. So, yeah, man. Uh, would you would you guys say any I mean, shout outs? Shout out for y'all, man. It, this is dope. I never been to the lab, man. Shout out for my love, Ashley. She she she's the one that called me. Like low key, I was gonna go to the Chargers game. I wasn't gonna represent for y'all, but I was. Gonna <laughs> <represent> <laughs> y'all, you know? But um, nah, man. It was it was a pleasure coming down here, man. Like you know, what I mean, it was it's fun. I see y'all outside of y'all element, but it's cool to see y'all doing what y'all do. Like this is big. Yeah, uh, Ashley, any shout outs? Man, I'm pretty much just sounds cliche, but definitely shout out to you, Marco. Thank you for inviting us once again. I love sitting down with y'all. It's always great conversation, always good vibes. It's yeah. cool just to get out, you know, have a new element to be around. It's great. So I had a good time. All right, for sure, for sure. It's the Amizi. Shout out to our guests for shooting through, man. Oh, yeah, man. It was It, was, it, just, it, was it just shows we doing something, right? You know, yeah. they, and they enjoying, they enjoying the movement. So, I mean. Um, that's what's up, man. Oh, also shout out to my homie Gooch, Jonathan, the homie in LA. I work with him. Okay, he listened to it. He was like, "Hey, man, you got to shout me out, man. I'm showing you love." Blah blah blah. Oh, that's what's so, up, man. Shout out to the homie Gooch, man. <laughs> yeah, quid pro. Yeah, he, quid he, pro, he always pro, coming you know in to work, doing a little walk. I'm like, all right, man, I got you. I got you. I shout you out. Man, um, shoot. I want to shout out, man. Um, I just want to shout out the hashtags veterans for Kaepernick for people who fully understood why they're doing it and not trying to demonize this young man for standing up for what he believes in. Even though, like I said, it's a protest and protests are not supposed to be convenient. Sit-ins are not supposed to be hunger strikes. However you protesting is not supposed to be convenient because you're trying to raise an awareness to some shit that's fucked up that's the point mm -hmm. of a whole protest so shout outs to anybody i don't care black white hispanic who believes in uh this point of view not saying it may be right man i'm saying it's wrong but i'm just saying for me it feels right that he's doing it so that's just my personal bias and i could be biased because it's my fucking show so fuck you um <laughs> if you don't like it fuck you yeah if you don't like it just don't listen that's all uh, well, anyway, if you enjoy <laughs> listening to this podcast as much as we love making it because we do what we love and love what we do. And uh, if you're not being your motherfucking self, you know what I got to say. The, the jig, jig is, is up. up. And we out. Uh, Joey Bosa signed, finally signed that contract. Uh, Joey Bosa.